Well, friends, here's an old one as well from many, many years ago. Again, this was a Christmas present uh, whenever we were children. Uh, the Game of Knowledge. I'm not sure when this one came out, probably around about 1985 or 1986 or 87. Around about that time, I remember getting this one Christmas and uh, really enjoyed it back in those days. And it's just like a, a junior version of Trivial Pursuits. You go around the board, you answer questions, you get a little ring for every question you ask. And it's all based upon our solar system, uh, the board that is, the playing board. And um, there's all sorts of different categories from general knowledge, geography, history, and all of those sorts of things. The game of knowledge, uh, a trivia game, the entertaining trivia game for children. Just a few questions in the front of the box. I'll maybe ask you them. Some of you might know these. What shape is a clay pigeon? How many holes does a telephone dial have? I don't think anybody that's been born uh, after 2000 would probably know the answer to that. Uh, what gets wetter the more it dries? Do elephants lie down to sleep? How many fingers did Captain Cook have? Uh, what is the longest running TV program? What day comes before Ash Wednesday? What is another name for pyrotechnics? And so they go on. That's the sort of questions you have to answer in the game of knowledge. And knowledge, of course, is a very important thing. Many people give their whole lives to pursuing knowledge and to learning more and to finding out more and to educating themselves more and more. And knowledge is a wonderful thing and it's very important to have the right type of knowledge. The Bible says in the book of Daniel towards the end of the book as it speaks about the last days and the end time and the rise of the man of sin, the little horn, the antichrist, that many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. And whenever you think of the last 100 years in comparison to world history, man has learned an awful lot of things scientifically, uh, medically, all sorts of things he's exploring into space and he's learning and learning and learning and knowledge is being increased. But sadly for many, the knowledge of God is something that they have absolutely nothing of at all. And this was a great problem in the days of the prophet Hosea. We read about Hosea in the Old Testament. He's the first of the 12 minor prophets recorded in Scripture. And Hosea was the prophet for Israel's zero hour. Israel had backslidden. They'd got away from God. And I find myself coming back to these minor prophets again and again and again because their messages are so relevant for the day and age in which we are living. And one of the things that God charged his people with in Hosea chapter 4 and verse number 6 was the lack or the want of knowledge. He said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. What a tragic series of events. The children of Israel found themselves in. They had not only rejected knowledge, but now they had no knowledge retained hardly at all. They, they just had got to a place where they no longer really knew who God was, what God was like, or what God required of them, but all the while they still viewed themselves as being God's people. And it reminds me a lot of the church in our day and generation. In many churches, the Bible is a closed book, or sometimes it is opened and it is read very, very selectively, but the Word of God is not really preached in all of its fullness. Very few nowadays preach the whole counsel of God. And there are many church-going people nowadays that don't understand the smallest and most fundamental and simple of Christian truth and doctrine. There are many churchgoers today that don't understand what the gospel is. They don't understand what repentance is. They don't understand what regeneration is. They don't understand what justification is. They don't understand what sanctification is. They don't understand conversion. 
They don't understand what God requires of them. They don't understand the role of the law of God, the Ten Commandments in their lives. And we're living very much in a free and easy day where we just do what is right in our own eyes and we live by the dictates of our own consciences. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And God wants us to know who he is. And he wants us, therefore, to know what this book teaches. Because this book is a lamp to our feet and a light onto our pathway. The Knowledge of the Holy is the title of a book that was written by A.W. Tozer. And he just expounds the simple and yet wonderful and sometimes very deep attributes of God in that book. And Jesus Christ came into this world so we might have the knowledge of God, not just doctrinally, but practically and experientially as well. John 17, 3, he prayed and said, This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Paul made that his heart's desire and ambition in Philippians 3, 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Let me just finish by reading a few quotes from some men of God from a bygone day on the subject of knowledge. Ignorance is your disease. Knowledge must be your cure. Richard Baxter. Stephen Charnock said, knowledge is the fountain of wisdom. Thomas Brooks, an old Puritan, said, there is no fear of knowing too much, but there is much fear of practising too little. Thomas Watson was another Puritan. He said, knowledge is the eye that must direct the foot of obedience. Knowledge is very, of very little use to us unless we're willing to obey. And then one last quote again, Thomas Watson, the knowledge of which we make no use will only serve to condemn us. Many people know the gospel, but they don't act upon it. They don't know Christ personally. Do you know Christ even today. May God write his word upon our hearts and may God bring us back to the Bible. Thank you for listening. Speak to you again soon.